hi folks, this is uh, Phil Chandler here and I've been promising you a follow-up on the uh, Zest Hive. So here's the Zest Hive with its shiny new roof, which I've just made on a rather windy day uh, and it's uh, in a struggle. So um, I thought I'd just, just talk about that for a moment. But also you can see I've actually got bees in here now. I've got two colonies, uh, one each side of the centre. There's a divider down the centre and there's a colony this side with a low entrance and a colony this side with a high entrance. Um, not, not right at the top of the hive, but uh, just below the uh, level of the, of the roof, as you can see. And they're both doing well. They've both been there for a mm, couple of months now. And I had to replace the queen on one of them, but they seem to be thriving anyway in there. I'm not going to open it today because it's just too windy. And um, I will do another follow-up by uh, w with o opening the thing as well. Uh, showing you what's going on inside, but just um, Wow, that's very bright on this roof. Uh, I wanted to show you quickly how I made the roof because it might be useful for people um, Thinking of making roofs for other different uh, different types of hive or the or this type of course The challenge I had was that this uh, is obviously a rather large hive and therefore the roof is uh, likewise large and if I made it out of timber of any description it's going to be pretty damn heavy. Okay being heavy is is a good thing in some ways because it makes it less likely to be blown off by the wind and this is a windy spot so and also a noisy one as you can hear from the from the road noise in the back in the background but um, the point is that um, I wanted a roof that was easy to lift off because clearly uh, if you're doing inspections on a hive like this, you want to be able to take the roof off reasonably easily and not have to get a crane to help you. Um, I thought of several different ways of doing it, including gables, including hinges, various things. But in the end, I came down to the very simple lift-off roof. And I made it out of uh, this stuff, which is, which is in the UK, is called Celotex. So you can only see a bit of the... Um, the logo there it's called Celotex with a C and it's a lightweight foam insulation board it's uh, 25 mil or one inch thick and it's coated both sides with aluminium foil thin foil and what I've done is use this stuff uh, which is an aluminium tape aluminium foil tape considerably thicker foil than the stuff on the board um, to stick everything together and so I've just gone I've just cut out the pieces. There's a one piece covering the top, obviously, and then there's uh, four sides. And I've just literally just taped it together using this aluminium tape. And it makes a pretty tidy job. And this stuff is, uh, this tape is very, very weatherproof. Um, it has a very powerful and aggressive adhesive, which sticks to any kind of smooth um, surface very well. It's not, it's got about zero tear strength. You can tear it really easily. But once it's stuck onto a surface, uh, it, it really does stick hard. So it's quite useful for jobs like this. Now, um, I've used, uh, this This is actually, from memory, 53 and a quarter inches long. I can't remember what that is in metrics. And for something like 135 centimetres, I can't remember. Um, so anything, you know, if I'd made that out of plywood, even relatively thin ply, um, I would have had to have... Uh, made it quite uh, in, in quite a lightweight construction to, to make it uh, usable. So the Solitex thing seemed to be like a good a good way of doing it. Now I could use those that of course the same technique I could use on on uh, top bar hives, but in fact we've used on these top bar hives. Uh, this one's empty. Um, th th these top bar hives we've used. Uh, that's not a snake in there, by the way. It's a weed that's grown through. Um, We've used um, hinge roofs, which, are, which is obviously a good thing. I could have used hinge roofs on that, but what I was worried about was that the, um, the block structure is only held together really by, uh, well, um, should we say gravity and uh, a lick of paint and a little bit of, um, a little bit of white filler. So it's not, you know, engineering wise, it's not a, an amazingly strong structure. Um, just by the way here, you can see wasps being beaten up at the entrance. Uh, these, these bees do not tolerate wasps at all. They're just be beating the heck out of that little guy who's trying to get in there. I'm, I'm not sure why he's being so persistent really. Uh, not giving him any 
mercy at all. Um, anyway, so there it is. Um, I, I have painted this hive since the last video and it needs another coat of paint. I don't know why I'm getting this effect here, whether the paint just didn't stick to the filler, that's possible. Um, so another coat of paint needed and otherwise I'm quite happy with it. The bees are very happy with it and that's the main thing of course. Um, so I will do a follow-up soon, as soon as the weather's uh, a little bit more uh, uh, clement, as soon as I can open the hive without the bees getting blown out of my hand, um, I'll do a follow-up. Uh, that's it, that's the zest hive for the time being.